So now this is a simplified worksheet because uh, there could be weird scenarios when you kind of match up the short term and long term capital gains and so on. But let's just what this is what we're going to do for now. So I'm going to say, OK, on the on the long term capital gains, we sold shares and the sales price. We said it was 1000 and the cost was, I think, 300. So the difference is calculated at that 700, which is I'm going to have to pull back to my formula. It's going to be included in line one. So I need to double click on line one, go to the end of it. I'm going to add that whole schedule D populating it into my my summary worksheet. So I'm going to say pull that in from the schedule D, which is this one. I need to name the worksheet. This is going to be I'm going to double click on the worksheet and call this schedule D schedule D cap gains, something like that. So then that pulls in over here. So there we have it. So now we've got the now notice this is another area where where basically we had kind of you might think of an expense, right? Because over here I had this is like the gross income and this was the cost or or what I needed to expend in order to get the income. So we don't we're not going to say the gross income is pulled in. We've got kind of you might call it a deduction the cost to get to the net income in essence the gain or loss which is pulled into line one of the uh, income tax formula we still have the 12,950 here that's the 87,750 which should match so 87,750 page two I'll let the calculation of the software work 14,879 so 14,879 I'm going to put the old number here so 14,774 has been changed to 14879. So notice the difference between those two is now uh, 500, uh, 5105 on a $700 increase. So there's a, a $700 increase that increased the tax 105. So what's the rate on that 700? 15%. So notice here that the average rate is, is 17%. If I go back to my tax software and I say, okay, let me look at my tax summary to look at my rates, then notice the marginal tax rate is actually 22%. So you would expect that if it was applying the ordinary rate, it would be applying that 22%, but it's picking up because I'm in this threshold of the income threshold, it's picking it up at 15%, taxing at the favorable tax rate of 15% instead of the 22%. We could see that if I go to the 1040 page two and look at the worksheet here and see the calculation on the 700s kind of pulling it out separately. So that calculation is quite complex because now we have a progressive tax system and also these other types of income now including long term. The long term benefits more than offsetting the one time cost for capital gain, which could also include dividends that is completely separately calculated from the tax than the normal progressive rates. So you're probably not going to do that calculation yourself, but you want to be able to explain that difference on the capital gains and take into consideration that difference when doing you know, tax planning and that kind of stuff. Now let's go back on over and let's say that it was short term. So let's say it was short term and say that the that we bought it in a uh, one January of 2022. So we sold it within a year. So now it's short term. Therefore, same impact on the net income, but the tax rates should be at ordinary income rates. Now it's up top at the short term portion. And then if I go to the form 1040, it pulls over. If I if I do that here, I'd say, OK, now let's reflect that here. I'm just going to say now it's not on the long term. Let's cut this and just paste it right there. Boom, it's on the short term. No difference to the first page of the form 1040 in terms of the income, but the tax will will change. So if I go back on over and say, okay, page two, tax is now at the 14,928. So I'm gonna put the 14,148. So that minus, that means that on the $700, we had an increase of 154. So it taxed it at the 22%, which is the marginal tax rate, the highest tax rate. That's what we would expect and anytime there's a change in income, it's gonna be taxed at that higher or marginal tax rate. Now, so that obviously gets more confusing. It's fairly straightforward here, but it gets more and more confusing if 
you had uh, short-term and long-term gains, right? Because in the short, if they were both gains, the short-term and the long-term uh, would be taxed at different rates. But what if you have a, a loss, like a, a short, like a like a short-term uh, gain and a long-term loss, or something like that? Then when you cancel them out against each other, you have that's where you get to get these funny rules, because because there's different tax rates on the on the two <laughs> right so if you have multi short term and long term that cancel each other out you, you get into kind of some weird scenarios i won't dive into all of them at this point we might touch on them a little bit more later but for now i also just want to point out that if you have multiple uh if you have multiple shares if you're t t dealing with a day trader then you would have to enter like all of the shares in order to populate properly into the software instead of doing that you might just you might just say this is this is the quantity a uh, number of shares from and you might say this is from the e trade e trade trade c attached attached for detail or something like that and then you could and then you could say this whole thing is going to be the short term portion from e trade and then you might say that you had i'm just going to summarize all the long term this is going to be e trade which i'm not sure i spelled right e trade long term portion and then in lacert tax software i think if you put a negative in front of these fields it'll show us a very date so i'm going to say this is e trade and then this is uh what what is it doing there e trade it won't let me delete that one thing long term oh my goodness e trade c attached for detail long term negative and let's make this 010100 and negative 060622 and let's say we we sold uh you know 10 10000 here and the cost was three thousand so so then i summarize these up and possibly attach then uh, an attachment showing all the detail if i need to to provide that detail so i'm not entering in a hundred different lines right because the major tax consequences are whether or not they're short-term or long-term if i make this pull over 